And for me, it's more like just trying to, like I have a movie at Lionsgate right now that's got pretty much like a 95% African-American Latino cast. And it's not about, it's just a horror movie. It's a slasher movie. And I just tell people, it's just like if you're watching Scream where it's like a bunch of pretty white kids and there's like, well, not even the first one, they didn't have any black people in the first one. But, you know, one of the later Screams um, where you're watching a bunch of pretty white kids and they have like the one black friend. Our movie is like, you're just focusing on all the pretty black and Latino kids and they have a couple of white friends. So it's, it's not that you're making a movie that's about race. It's just you're casting a movie that's just focusing on a different group of friends than most of the horror films do. So I think that that, that type of movie, in my humble opinion, will actually reach a wider market because, again, you know, white audiences just want to go see a good horror movie. You know, like they don't care what color they, the characters are. Um, and then people of color who are horribly underrepresented in horror films are, are a huge audience for horror films. Um, we've just done all the test even at New Line we did test marketing back in you know the 90s and it was like in all the major cities it was like 50 percent you know of the horror audiences in all the major cities were african-american latino and it's such a horribly underserved market that they'll go to see the movie numerous times because they've never seen themselves represented on screen as just people um and regular horror fans i'm not regular that's awful um, I'm trying to be so PC right now. <laughs> Screw that. I'm no snowflake. Um, you know, but, you know, horror fan, white horror fans, as mm-hmm. long as it's a good slasher movie, they're going to go see it a couple times too. Um, so that's going to be a really good kind of social experiment. And it's taken me like 20, you know, I've been trying since I tried to have a, you know, black lead in one of the Final Destination movies and it just it's never happened. And, um, you know, so it's taken me like, yeah, it's taken me 20 some years to like finally get a movie going, you know. So it's it is it's funny when we when we talk about you know where race is and is is in America and it's like oh we're you know we voted for Obama so we're post racial now and everything's hunky dory and it's like yeah it's not you know like because because you know Hollywood's pretty friggin liberal but they they know what sells and what won't sell and they know how people like pigeonhole kind of movies and sometimes they do underestimate definitely they underestimate people's intelligence in a way or. or um, what they'll go see, but there, there's just also the hard reality that you have to prove to them, like a movie like Girl Trip that came out with Jada Pinkett and Queen Latifah and, you know, makes $30 million opening week and they're like, what? You know, and Wonder Woman comes out directed by a woman and about a woman superhero, what? They act so surprised and it's like, nobody wants to take a chance on something that's different. Um, so you have, to sh- you have to find that person that will or that studio that will. And then once you do, I guarantee you once this movie comes out, there's going to be a whole bunch of, you know, slasher horror films that are like, you know, heavily like diverse cast. So, um, so again, it's kind of like a quiet fight. You know, I haven't been running around like, you know, yelling after every final lesson he comes out going, I wanted a black character to be the lead and they wouldn't do. like, I, you know, that's not going to do me any good. That's just going to upset people and make people think that I'm like crying race. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not going to be productive. So you just kind of have to put your, Put your best foot forward and put your money where your mouth is and try to, till you find the people that like kind of get behind a movie like the one that we're doing now. So did you try to add a non-white uh, character to any of the Final Destination? Yeah. And, and what would happen? Uh, they would just cast a white person. So they, you would write it into the script yeah. as to who this character was yeah. and then when you saw the final product, yeah, that person yeah. wasn't there, okay. Yeah, and it, you know, it, it was, fr- it, it, and the, 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 re- the reality is, is Internationally, movies, if, if the lead is a person of color, they don't sell as, as, as well internationally. And, you know, I get, except for like, if, you know, like a Halle Berry or a Denzel Washington, or there's, you know, there's, a, there's, there's like maybe five names that will, in certain genres, will sell internationally. But, you know, a movie like Get Out comes out and it makes 100 million here and it only costs like 5 million to make. It's like, who cares what it makes internationally? Like, you're going to make that money here. So there, there is a little bit of, business reasoning behind it but a lot of it's like until you you try to break the mold you never know what the mold you know you never know until you try to break the mold and um you know that's why i think this last year with get out and wonder woman were so important is because even though i i even on on my facebook before it came out i'm like i'll bet my life that wonder woman's gonna be one of the top selling you know superhero films of all time and it's just because people don't they underestimate how powerful of an impact linda carter had as wonder woman so pretty much everybody, you know, in their 40s, you know, 50, you know, and above and, you know, late 30s, anybody who kind of grew up on seeing Linda Carter as Wonder Woman loved that character. And she's been around forever. And then you got younger people meeting her in the Justice League. So I knew the movie was going to do 
like huge business but nobody you know it's like when people say oh if a if an openly gay actor were to play a you know like james bond nobody would believe it and i'm like why don't we try it first you know like because i i I think people that go watch movies like know that Robert England's not a, you know, child molesting serial killer that wears, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure that they know he's not like that in real life. Um, so I don't know. It's, it's, it's funny. So you just try to make whatever changes you can with your art. And a lot of times it, just, it doesn't even happen. And again, I'm, I work in the horror genre. So for, you know, again, it's, it's even more, it's even harder to try to like, you know, you don't want to, you can't get too high minded in, you know, in a horror film. You can, you know, again, you can try to, again, make strong female characters, you know, make interesting dynamics between, between everybody, um, you know, show the diversities of just people of, of any like religion or background. And, you know, you can try to put all that in your movie, but a lot of times that, that ends up getting out of your hands, um, you know, once you sell the script. So you just kind of, again, that's when you learn to kind of let go and, you know, be grateful that you had a movie made, you know.